Hello, everybody, and welcome to Lauren de Costa's charity Simul. Uh, Lauren is raising money um, for charity, and I think he's doing. He's going to be doing a marathon as well, and maybe I think it's a, a chess and running marathon. Oh um, we'll, we'll maybe hear more details from him on that later. Um, but this first uh, stage of the fundraising is um, a chess Simul, and we will see. International Master Lauren de Costa take on um, lots of juniors, and uh, so we are going to comment. And uh, actually, let's put our names on it. So uh, this is GM. Wow! I didn't even do anything. Oh, that's called default font. There you go. The default font. <laughs> but it actually, it's nicer, isn't it? That's, that's nicer. Yeah, that looks very good. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. So you're going to share your screen, I think, today. So. I have shared my screen. So if you could probably just activate. Here we go. Now let's have a look. I'll, I'll see whether I can, uh, I don't know whether I can make this uh, somehow better or uh, bigger, but I'm just sort of expecting once. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Um, just uh, forgive us whilst I play around a little bit. Maybe I, I, I need to, if I just share my... Share the tab, that all should work. Share the tab, that normally works better, doesn't it? Like that. Yeah, that's better. Then, we can, uh, then I think that looks better, doesn't it? You can already it? see on the preview, that's better. Yeah, that's better, right. So um, uh, let's have a look. Can I make it maybe a bit bigger? Yeah, I'll make it, uh, that way I don't make it too big. And then uh, we'll, we'll see what... Um, uh, let's have a look. Just get everyone on there like that. I make it a bit bigger, not too big. Weed, so just so it fills the whole page. There we are. That's about three quarters of my screen, but I think that's pretty good. So uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll um, um, uh, we'll uh, yeah. When when the board start, we'll see whether we can get it uh, even more optimal. But I think that looks pretty good. Uh, when is it starting, actually? Half past six is oh, what I started already, understand. Right? So it should have started. Do we have to do anything fancy? I don't have to join, do I? No, I don't think so. Don't think so. So how do we see it? So I'm, I'm looking for... Um, uh, I don't think it started yet. No, I don't think it started yet. Twitch ECF commentary. Ah, there we are. I think a Saruma started. I don't know her room has just joined. I think a few people are still joining. Yes. So um, yeah, and then it's going to uh, going to start. How many got, we got one, two? How many people we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen players. Okay. Not yet. About to says uh, says Lauren. So uh, all right. We will advertise the link to donate. I've just asked Lauren to give us the link. Oh, so if anyone wants to donate, we will um, tell you where to go to donate. Fantastic. So, um, okay, looking forward to this. So let's have a look. We've got uh, quite a few people with question marks um, after their name. So that means that, but probably this is because it's sort of a slow play. As some people who don't, obviously yeah. haven't played that much on uh, on uh, on Lee Chess. Ooh, look at him. He's got um um that's a blitz rating of uh, a rapid rating of twenty two twelve. Ooh, and the book that? rating of one eighty six. That's that's a decent rating. Lauren, uh, you got to watch out. Yeah, we've got um, somebody with a, a rapid rating of twenty forty six. Um, so some of these ratings are you know people have uh, played high. Some of them are just uh, are indeed. Oh, w Panda is. Uh, Twenty one thirty nine. Um, no, I don't have any of these on mine. How weird! Ah, no, it started anyway. Okay, it started. Uh, right. So, what sort of? Uh, I, I suppose we can just click on the board, can we? And uh, I think we can. Yeah. So we can pick which one. Um, let's maybe. Should we maybe just? Um, uh, is that view for, for, for viewers, or uh, I was wondering whether we should just start to let the first opening moves happen, and then uh, and then click on one that we find interesting because. Uh, just uh, or maybe we can just uh, let's um, let's just go through in order because then we'll make sure we get to everyone. Okay, let's uh, uh, have a look. So BK George, I'm just wondering how I go from board to board. Actually, that's, I think you just uh, click on it. No, but I mean, uh, do I have to keep on going back to the sim or can I just do a next? Uh... Move? See what I mean, I would say. But okay, BK George has played D4 against uh, Lauren. That's very good. 
Um, we've got uh, LP Chess, who's played one E4 against Lawrence. So Lawrence taking uh, some white and some black, actually, which is quite uh, quite tough. Um, Lauren hasn't made any moves yet, actually. So uh, Nive yeah, um, is playing uh, E4 against uh, Lauren. Uh, oh, we've got a uh, oh, that's Lauren playing C4. Lauren uh, wrote a DVD about uh, one C4, so not surprising to see that. Mabrung um, uh, hasn't done E4. Um, we've got uh, W Panda hasn't played yet. Maximus Lions not. Arena SG has played E4. A lot of E4 in this uh, symbol. Um, we've got Phoenix Chaser, who's played uh, E4. <coughs> and uh, let's have a look what I've got. Oh, oh, I can see a London system appearing. I can also see a London system on the board there. So that's uh, uh, Lauren's first move there, London system. So uh, who's J833333? I'm not quite sure. It's uh, so... Um, certainly with the opening moves, I mean, I think what's going to be happening is that Lauren's going to be getting, he's going to be cycling through the boards, basically. So uh, yeah. uh, I think he's, uh, um, I've done, we did these symbols, haven't we? We've done three, I we think, uh, in total. Yeah. And, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about timings for the symbols. So this one is set up so that the juniors each get half an hour to play all their moves. And the master, Lauren, gets an hour and a half. Now, you might think that's going to be a lot of time for Lauren. But what you do have to remember is that he is playing, how many was it? 15 boards at once. And so actually, you kind of, in your mind, divide that time by that many. Um, and uh, and that, that gives you kind of the average per board of time that you've got so it it's not like he's really got an extra hour to think because his time will be ticking on all the boards at once indeed i mean what do we do i, I tried i think i tried with an hour and a half and 30 boards and i got i i lost half of them on time i think didn't i that was um um so uh that was quite uh one of the most uh, depressing experiences <laughs> In some ways, because, uh, you know, you get to uh, at some stage, I got to the, you know, close to the end time of the simul. And then every time I went to a different board, I lost on time. <laughs> it was, uh, I remember that. That was a, a terrible, because you could see, you could see this situation approaching and you couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> no, it was really, uh, but okay, that's, um, let's see how, uh, it's only 15 boards for Lauren. And, um, and yes, I mean, what, what really help getting rid of some games. And uh, I think, you know, but I think 15 is quite a good number. 15 is doable. Yeah. yeah. So, um, oh, we've got, um, uh, what is Lauren going to do here, do you think? Do you think it's going to be a Benko Gambit with B5 or, um, uh, or is he going to play a king, uh, a sort of a, a deferred Benoni or a straight Benoni with E6? Despite having played on the same team as Lauren for um, probably two decades, <laughs> maybe not quite that long, um, I still don't know what actually he plays. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All good. Um, oh, we've got a we've got a, a perk here on uh, on board two. D four coming. So uh, we'll see what uh, Lauren does. Knight f six. I would guess g six also possible. Just for uh, for a little modern. Um, we've got uh, one e four on this board. Um, oh, a lot of uh, a modern from uh, from uh, Lauren here. So quite interesting. <coughs> Obviously decided this is the way to deal with the juniors. We've got a, yes. a, one, a one C four here, one C four E five played by uh, by Black. So uh, Lauren will have to uh, think about what he does. What did Lauren recommend in his uh, in his DVD? I, I saw it, but it's quite a few years ago now, so I can't really remember. Um, we've got a um, uh, one E four E five opening, very solid. Was it chess on toast? Was that Lauren's? Am I making that up? It's yeah, no, sprung you... into my head. <laughs> I, I don't know. This was just a, a, a DVD about one C four. So okay. uh, a complete. Yeah, he did. He's. I think he's done some DVDs for juniors as well. Ah, okay. So, uh, oh, a Sicilian here and uh, getting a C three Sicilian. Um, okay, that's uh, quite interesting. Um, another C four opening here against W Panda. W Panda being one of the strongest players. E six played. So, I, I, what I always like doing here is to go. <coughs> pardon me, Knight C three. Bishop b4 is quite common, and then queen c2, and just playing these positions. Uh, uh, Alpha zero played them a lot, and uh, yeah, I like them a lot too, yeah. actually. Um, so um, then what have we got? We've got uh, one e4 against Maximus Lyons. 
We've got a um, slightly offbeat French there, e4, e6, knight, c3. Uh, gives black the opportunity to go back into a Sicilian with c5. Uh, if you go d5, white can go d4, which is a mainline winner. Um, or alternatively, after d5, you can play this slightly offbeat line with knight f3, um, which is quite interesting. Just uh, I had a little look at it a, a while back. Um, so uh, that's all possible. We'll see how that goes. e4 against Haruma. Uh, oh, we're looking like we're maybe going to get an, uh, a Grand Prix attack or maybe... Oh, good. I like the Grand Prix attack. That's always a lot of fun. Um, or this could just be a cunning uh, move order transposition and white plays something like knight e2 or knight f3, aiming for a d4 and a, uh, and a close Sicilian. So uh, all possible. Um, ooh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So white could... Yeah, white could he play f4 and Grand Prix. Played f4. 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 So it is the Grand Prix. So yeah, I we will expect White to um, attack on the king side in this game. I'll expect um, Lauren to maybe at some stage. I don't know how, what he'll do with his pawns because you can put like a pawn onto d6, or you could try e65. That's a sort of well-known defense against this thing. And then Lauren might try and put his knight in onto d4 and just swap knights to kind of blunt White's attack. Yeah, but normally um, when um, the point is that um, so normally the normal ways for black to go g6, knight f3, bishop g7, uh, and if bishop c4, the fact that you haven't played d6, you can means you can play e6 and then d5 and then you hit that bishop on c4. That's a very common way of uh, defending. I mean, one of the most common things is that after knight c3, if black wants to play a Nidorf, avoiding all transpositions, black plays d6 and then white plays f4, and that's been that's quite strong. I mean. Uh, Vichy has played this with white quite a lot, uh, with okay. a lot of effect, actually. So, uh, um, so that's quite common, but we'll see how that all goes. We've got, um, oh, okay. Ooh, wow. Ooh, that's <laughs> that sounds exciting. Um, so we've had um, e4, uh, oops, sorry, uh, e4, e5, knight c3, d6, g3, knight c6. That's on all the f6 is a very did black mean to do that, or was that a mouse click? Because f5 makes some sense, but f6 is a really strange move. You don't normally, you don't normally do this because it's just um, yeah. sort of weakening your king, and um, and uh, obviously the knight can't get to f6. So um, uh, yes, yeah. The problem with it, yeah, it is that, um, like, say the king were to castle kingside, um, then the, the, there's a sort of weak diagonal leading up to the king. So you wouldn't normally want to have that pawn there. You might want to develop the knight because where's the knight going to go now? Probably. I suppose you can go to e7 and g6. Um, oh, we're going to get a bishop takes h6 now. Oh, that's going to be ugly for the pawns. <laughs> I'm just looking at the chat here. So Marba Unger says, we have low rating, but we will win. Oh, well, there we are. Rating talk from the juniors and quite right. Indeed. So, okay, um, so will Lauren in that position, will he take on h6 take the knight and double black's pawns as soon as he comes to the board he will take on h6 and then follow yes up he will five. because you can do what well, queen Actually, h5 check it yeah. i think this is force mate virtually force oh, is it force mate so uh, should we show it on, can we show it on the board we'll um, probably just do the arrows i'm pretty sure we must be able to uh to do a bit uh, analysis board there we are so bishop h6 if you take <coughs> like a queen h5 check and if you go king d, I mean, where do you go? If you go king d7, I go bishop h3 check. And after king e7, I go knight d5 mate. Yeah. So this problem has stemmed. Gosh, it is nasty. This problem has stemmed from that f6 move because yeah. it then meant that black needed to get the knight out somewhere to so put it on h6. Yeah. Um, but this this weakness of the king is, is it does look very, very dangerous. So, so, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, you, you just can't capture this piece. That's the point. And, uh, but yeah, obviously, that's just... Uh, yeah, just so we there. would expect to see Lauren take the knight there on h6. Yeah, I'm sure as soon as he gets to the board, he's uh, <laughs> he's going to whip that one off. There's not going to be any uh, any hesitation there. Um, we've got... Um, oh, this is a Tromposki. Should she fight? Oh, that's a lot of fun. It takes. So we'll see. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just already seeing Lauren's time. He's... he's He's, he's three moves in and he's lost eight minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit worried. Yeah, I, I, I suppose he's played. 
No, he did. He played another simul last week, although I think it was fewer boards. So, yeah, if you're giving a simul, one thing to be aware is just how much the time depends on how many boards you're playing, yeah. just because of the way it divides across all the boards. Oh, I just see that Black hasn't actually taken on uh, H6. He's played Queen E7. Okay. So, um, uh, so okay, that's, that avoids the immediate loss, but of course it does mean that you're, uh, that you're a piece Oh, player. yes, but Lauren will now, he'll be happy to have that extra knight. Indeed. Looking very good for white, that one. Um, and last game is uh, J8333333. Um, so, oh, London system, what's happened there? Um, Bishop F4, how strange. Um, knight f6, knight c3, a6, he played bishop d2. So, black is is black here the junior player? Uh, no, uh, black is uh, is Lauren there. So. Uh, white is the junior player. So, white was sensibly developing their pieces, um, but this one moving the bishop twice in the opening is unusual because. You'd normally want to get out all the rest of your pieces before you start. Yeah, uh, I mean, e3 e3 here would be very uh, normal, you know, just to... Uh, you've got the bishop lovely uh, squared, good diagonal here, so leave it there and just develop the rest of your pieces, really. But, uh, OK, we should d2 played. Um, e6, e3, c5. Takes, takes, bishop d3. So a black comfortable, but uh, um, nothing uh, terrible happening yet. Yeah. Oh, so Lauren has played a Benko. Okay, so now the Benko is an opening where Black gives up a pawn on the Queen side. And the idea is you get very active play for your pieces. And uh, so you can see here, this is what Lauren does. Indeed, and yeah. White takes it off, which is normal. You can take it off. Um, and, and so Lauren's idea is to, yeah, play on those open A and B files. And White's idea, BK George's idea, will be to make the most of the extra pawn that Lauren has given them. Indeed, yeah, this is, this is the um, the main line, I suppose, of the Benko, where White grabs the pawn and, uh, um, yeah, White's king uh, uh, is stopped from casting, but White plays g3, king g2, so it doesn't really make much difference. Um, yeah, and Black's got the A and B files, White's got uh, um, an extra pawn, and uh, I mean, I've played these positions with White, I've analysed them an awful lot, but I've, I've always found them, ex I've always found them tricky to play with White. Um, yeah. Um, certainly, the White uh, is doing very well so far, knows their theory. Indeed. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, I played um, um, a game against uh, Gwen Jones in Blitz and uh, got a lovely position, played really well, but uh, just, um, yeah, the counterplay always keeps on going, you know, with the um, with the Benko. And, uh, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's, 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 it's quite difficult to play at rapid time controls. Um, I also had a game with White um, in uh, the last round of a, of a weekend open, and uh, it was one of those strange things where I'd, um, I'd beaten a... A 2650 player is black, so that put me into the lead. Great game, played really well. And then mm. I, I played uh, in the last round a, a 2100 player, and uh, I was um, white and I got a Benko. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I only, I was worse all the game <laughs> and uh, and only won by gigantic luck, really. So, it, it, it <laughs> sort of, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, in principle, you know, I think this is a very good line for white, but quite difficult to handle. So we'll see how, uh, how, uh, how white does there. It's... Uh, um let's have a look then the next one oh this is a slightly offbeat line from uh from lauren so um uh, a favorite i think of terry chapman this line so the, uh, the english amateur so bishop d3 and then black's going to try and play uh, e5 here knight bd7 bishop b7 sort of an old indian but uh um or a philidor type of thing but you've sort of restricted the white pieces in the way but your queen on a5 is a little bit odd so uh it's a sort of swings and roundabouts thing White's most aggressive line here is actually to play f4 and really try and grab a lot of central space. So, uh, um, uh, in this position, no, in that, yes, in this position, in this position, f4 here. Wow, yeah. So, uh, very, very dangerous for black, actually. Uh, I think the engines are so assess it as something like plus 1.5 for white, but of course, yeah, I mean, that's uh, in the normal play, it's a bit more unclear than that. Um, we've got a mainline Karakhan brewing here. Um, so e4, c6, e4, d5, knight, d2. 
Bishop F5. I think I once played, I think I played once played Bishop D3 against Lorin actually, sacrificing this D4 pawn. Oh, right. It was an Alakin favorite in actual fact. So, um, was it deliberate? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been studying some games of Alakin, so I thought, okay, well, let's, uh, let's do it. Um, I think Lauren didn't take the pawn actually, even. I think he played something else, but uh, yeah, uh, but that okay. was and this time Lauren's on the white side, so he might try it. No, no, he played knight g3, he played the good old uh, this is the main line so main far. Line. Uh, here yeah. he goes up about move 40, really. So, uh, well, we'll see how uh, all that goes. Uh, then we've got what to oh, this is weird. Um, let's have a look. How did this go? Oh, uh, this is the rat. A rat. The rat opening. So this is a, a Magnus Carlsen favourite in Banter Blitz. Uh, countless games with the rat. Is the rat the black side? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nine f six on move two. Okay. So, so white um, could presumably go e five. Yeah. The idea is that um, uh, the idea is uh, after e five you go knight h five, and if bishop e two you go d six, and sacrifice. Uh, uh, sacrifice this uh, a pawn here, but get the get the two bishops. It's um, a little bit dodgy, but um, uh, but well, you know, I mean, it's uh, vaguely playable, like so many things. So white played knight c three, d five, e five, knight h five, bishop e two, knight g seven, bishop f three, slightly unusual, c six, and bishop h six. So we'll end up swapping off the dark square bishop. But I think queen b6 here is going to be a little bit um, annoying, hitting uh, uh, these two pawns. And then mm. the knight comes out to f5. You're, going to, you're, probably going to, you're probably going to have to sacrifice this b2 pawn, I think. Um, so wait, that might be uh, might be fine. So this is White's played very sensibly, this game. Ah, he's played queen b6. There we are. Lawrence played queen b6. So Lawrence played queen b6. So this will, yes, leaves an interesting decision for White. Do you try and defend the pawns? Or do you just carry on um, and try and get an attack, give up the pawn and get an attack? Indeed. We will see how that goes. Um, so, okay, we've got uh, this line. I mean, just <laughs> it's three moves. He's already used 12 minutes on this game. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a bit nervous for him, actually. But uh, um, so knight of three, knight c6. So the four knights. So yeah, now uh, Lauren's got to make a decision. G3. Actually, come to think of it, in his um, in his course, um, Lauren recommended G3. Uh, so it's a while back. So uh, and after yeah. D5, he played this Nakamura line, which is okay. uh, bishop g2 and e3, which I think was also recommended uh, um, by um, uh, Richard Palliser and uh, uh, Simon Williams in their Iron English yeah. book. Uh, Enchessable course recently. It's quite interesting. I mean, you put the knight on e2 and uh, go d4 and uh, d4 or, or f4. You know, very interesting line, actually. Uh, funnily enough, um, there were quite a few Alpha Zero um, or Stockfish Alpha Zero games in this. Some absolutely crazy ones. And uh, Black, played the, the Black played the interesting uh, Queen d3 here, which is uh, yeah, really sharp. I mean, it's. Uh, yeah. Um, it's one actually one of the main lines nowadays, but I think in those days it was uh, virtually unknown. So uh, interesting idea. But anyway, Lawrence played knight f3 here, and now we're going to see whether he plays e3 or g3. Um, other ideas that have been played, a3 and d3. So, uh, and d4 as well. As d4, well. yeah, I was going to say, you could play d4. Uh, that's, the, that's the really old main line, uh, d4, yeah. but uh, not thought to give white anything at all. Um, but... Uh, uh let's have a look um oh what's the king's gambit surely oh let's see it natasha's favorite opening i do i like it not my oh. favorite but i do like it he takes d5 I prefer the mora okay this is a little bit strange from uh from black here normally um uh after d5 he takes d5 you've got a number of moves uh normally you go um he takes f4 or e4 which is the do you remember what that's called natasha no. Five to e four. No, but you're meant to go. Um, well, just knight c three. Uh, yeah, or d three. Or d three. Uh, yeah. It's a pork beer counter gambit. Pork beer counter gambit. Isn't that just d five? No, it's, I'm pretty Green sure. Four in as well. Okay. E four is the normal follow up. Um, but uh, so queen takes c five is slightly unusual because white just gains a lot of time there, and uh, yeah, this is actually qu this is quite a good advertisement for playing the. Um, 
uh, the King's Gambit with White. Oh, another nice extra tempo for um, for White there. So a couple of lovely tempo, open E file, F file, Black King uncastled. I think Lauren will be uh, will be happy with this as uh, as White. Little Queenie two check there just to keep Black uh, alert. Oh, let's have a look what's happened here. This is a bit of an unusual line. So. E5. Uh, uh -huh. C3 Sicilian. Played a lot of moves in this uh, in this uh, game. Ooh, F4. Rather no, um, I think the white player here is the one who was commenting on the chat Indeed. Um, that the juniors are going to win. Indeed. F4 is slightly unusual here because uh, sort of um, when you you know when you've got this pawn structure with e5 e6 on the board already, you know the chances that the pawn advances to F5 are quite not so high so, ah. uh, so hi uh, james pratt Folk hey, hey. yes and the pribble not a rat it's a north sea defense says james pratt i'm pretty sure it's the, called the rat so that's what magnus called it anyway mm. so um uh but f4 is a little bit uh also you know sort of blocks the dark square bishop really so um but okay bishop b4 bishop d2 queen a5 Knight f3, oh, and uh, nabbing a pawn now because the bishop on d2 is pinned. Takes, takes, knight c3. Could have tried to take the pawn, just been really risky, but you take castles. Queen d2, knight g6. So a pawn up, why well, it's got a little bit of compensation, a bit of free play, but uh, no, in principle, black can't be unhappy at having won a pawn that early. Oh, w panda playing very solid there. Um, c4 e6 b6 e4 or d6 the uh the normal line is to go bishop b7 uh here and after e5 to play knight e4 it's supposed to be decent for uh for white uh, for black rather a uh, bishop b7 bishop d3 has been played a lot but that's also supposed to be quite decent for uh for black d6 is a bit passive because after d4 white's got this uh this uh yeah central pawn mass basically um bishop b7 bishop d3 d5 e5 so a sort of a check benoni structure where black's already put the bishop on b7 which is you know aiming against a, a wall of pawns really so yeah this guy's not really very active h3 now lauren's going to expand on the king side as well in principle very nice position for white this one can i give you just a little bit more background on this event Go for it. Um, so lauren is running he's done two marathons before in 2010 he ran the edinburgh marathon Oh, good Lord. And in 2013, he ran the London Marathon. Oh, wow. So October 2021, London Marathon comeback. Um, and so he's attempting his third marathon. He's going to support the Stroke Association. And it's in memory of his father, Bill De Costa. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, and if he raises a thousand pounds, he is going to play a blitz game every three miles of the run in his online tournament. So he's going to run and play blitz. So please do generously support um, Lauren's charity in memory of his dad. Um, I'm going to put the link in in the chat um, for uh, in um, Twitch and YouTube. There you are. I've just put it, the link there. So please do support him. Um, it's a really good cause, uh, the Stroke Association. Um, and he's also doing it in a very nice novelty way with chess and running together. Fantastic. Well done, Lauren. I want to play him at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to play him after 26 miles. <laughs> exactly. Uh, fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, uh, let's look. We've had one e4, e5. Oh, uh, um, Lauren must have a look at that game, really, because uh, um, although I think it's black, actually, you spent a, a long time uh, over the first move, so that's not too bad. Um, what is it? Oh, this is a strange one. Let's have a little look at that. So e4, e6. French defense. Oh, bishop d3. That's not normally uh, thought to be a, a, um, a, the best idea because uh, it blocks in this pawn, which blocks in this bishop, basically. But um, knight f6, knight c3, c5, uh, bishop b2, and then Lauren nabbed the pawn. Da -da -da. Yep. Take knight the money, Lauren. Knight e5, knight d7, knight e4. Ooh, this knight's a little bit offside. Uh, bishop d6. 
So uh, knight b6. Oh, and uh, I'm afraid. Oh, that, that was go. that was clever by the international master. He's uh, he's so, uh, trapped that bishop. So the pawn on c4. Now the bishop doesn't have a square because the knight's covering a4. So that Ooh. bishop is trapped. And I don't think there's anything white can do about that. I'm afraid not. So it looks like that's going to be an extra piece for um, for uh, Lauren there. Um, let's have a look. We keep on going through the games. Ah, what's this one? Uh, e4, e5. Oh, d4. Oh, I played this as well. I had uh, actually it was the same event. I, I looked at lots of Al gambits that Alakin had once played. Yeah. And, and I ended up trying to play all of them. So uh, the thing is, nobody ever really accepts this gambit. I played it loads when I was uh, eight or nine. You know, got so many good wins, but nobody yeah. takes it anymore. Oh, good Lord. But this wasn't, uh, this went a bit wrong because knight takes d4 was played. Oh, so it's defended. A, that's a piece. So uh, very good start for, uh, for Lauren there in that game as well. Oh, now it, we can see there's been one result. So it's oh, good Lord. 14 games to play, one win. I think that's a win for Lauren there. Uh, I don't know if we can see which game that happened in. Oh, that must be this one. Must be this one. So um, let's have a little look how that went. Have I got a yes? So takes. Oh, it was this um, this uh, London system. Yeah, this was a strange move. I think next time, uh, I think uh, with White, just need to look at playing e3 and uh, um, so e6, e3 takes takes uh, f3 again. Probably better just to develop that knight to f3. Get the pieces out before you start uh, moving pawns like that. Oh, e4, that's dangerous. Uh, opening up this diagonal towards the king. So I reckon that's probably what Lauren exploited. Oh, and you know what Lauren's done? He's very craftily moved his bishop backwards so it's less obvious. And, and so it's a kind of veiled threat on that diagonal. Oh, this, mm. yes, there's, I think there's a checkmate oh, coming here. Yeah, but, uh, this, one's, uh, this one's pinned by the rook. So, oh, uh, yes, mate. white can't stop mate now. So king f1 and queen f2 mate. Well, well done, Lauren. That's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... Well, thank you very much for playing, though. Thank you uh, much can you play. see the names? Yeah. The name's very small where I am. Yeah, indeed. Well played, everyone. Um, let's have a look. We've got um, uh, Phoenix Chaser. So this is a, um, uh, um, a Grand Prix attack. Um, and White's playing it uh, in the modern way with bishop b5, knight d4 castles. Now, the normal way to play here for black is to take, <coughs> take and take <coughs> five. Um, funny enough, I actually had this against, um, we, that was in a um, uh, um, one of these London classic pro business tournaments. So oh, yes. we're playing with, Dan, Dan, with Daniel Lindner. Um, it's about 2150, 2200. And we were playing with black, man. and we were playing with black against uh, Ali Mortazavi and David Howe. So uh, I am Ali Mortazavi and uh, um, and uh, yeah, of course, Grandmaster David Howe. So a very strong pairing. Um, and we actually managed to win that game, which I'm still very, very proud of. <laughs> uh, I have to say. The idea is you go five and if white plays E takes D5, you don't play there because of. Oh, knight c7 check wins that queen. Indeed. But what you do actually is a, a clever move. You go a6 first, you chase the knight back, and knight f6, and then you just pick up this pawn afterwards with knight d5. So it's just. Uh, yes. And then that pawn on f4 looks a little bit out of place. Indeed. And so, so I mean, white played uh, e5, and uh, and we had a really sharp game, actually. It was a great game. And uh, but we won. It was uh, actually converting a, a game when you're playing. Uh, so pro biz for those that don't know, it's a pair chess where each player takes um, uh, one move each. So you know, I would play d5, and then uh, uh, after e5, it would be Daniel's move to do something. So uh, very, very quite scary chess, really. And uh, I played it one year as well. I, I was partnering Mickey Adams, and we got. Um, Two out of three, including win against Hikaru and a win against um, Caruana. So that was that was probably my best day of chess ever. <laughs> yeah, they no, played really well together with uh, together with Mickey. That's uh, it's quite tough. I, I find it uh, I find it very stressful uh, um, to uh, to be the uh, you know the, the, the GM and uh, you're supposed to uh, sort of take the lead and guide your player and uh, and all of that. But um, I mean, some players can do it better than others. Uh, I mean, um, uh, I thought um, uh, Levon Aronian was absolutely superb at it, and uh, yeah, 
Magnus too, actually. Yeah, but just these really clever, clever, you know, players who understand very well. You know, what can I let my player do, and what? How can I make it awkward for the opponent? Yeah. You know, give, give the, um, give the, um, uh, give the the weaker partner all of the difficult decisions. You know, I mean, that's. Uh, um, yeah, I was very impressed with. Uh, I played against Levon uh, one year, and I was very, very impressed with uh, with him. That was really, uh, really amazing what uh, what he did. Um, let's have a look. So, uh, what other games have we got? We got this one. Ooh. So, um, this was one where, um, where Ooh, look at that knight in on a eight. <laughs> yeah. So Lauren picked up a, a piece on H six pretty quickly. <laughs> well, Percy, uh, no, I don't do that, but, um, <laughs> uh i think i'm allowed to uh, to say this but uh, apparently gary was quite a tough partner to play with you know because uh, you know when um, when you're playing with gary and you make a move he doesn't like you know gary was uh, <gasps> <laughs> but you can tell yeah you can tell when your partner doesn't like your moves yeah no, we were doing that we did practice for that hand and brain and and um and at first you learned to then control it so you weren't too worried but at first you were like really reacting whenever i played a bad move yeah no, it's, it's so, so natasha and i played um uh, a hand and brain event in uh, it was for judith polgar's uh, global festival and uh um yeah so we decided to have a bit of a practice for for uh, hand and brain so actually we played on chess.com and we're just playing uh, you know uh, normal games but uh, yeah hand and brain so um that meant that um uh what was happening uh yeah uh, I was making the moves, so I was the hand, and Natasha was the brain. I think that was how we uh, how we did it. And um, uh, Natasha got got a bit spooked because <laughs> when, when, I could tell. I could just tell whether you liked the moves or not. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, you know, I wasn't um, um, I wasn't really um, uh, um, I wasn't really uh, acting well. But but um, we got it together, didn't we? And uh, I, I managed to um, what what I actually discovered uh, actually in the hand and brain. I think it's a, a really fantastic tip. Actually, was that the key thing was not to not to focus on the move that I wanted to play and then react if you know Natasha said something else. But yeah. it was more to think of what sort of possibilities do I have with each piece. And yeah. Then after so Natasha if said, I said something ridiculous like Rook, you'd have some kind of thing to make the best of that situation. Yeah. But, but I mean, actually, you know, it, it was more. You know, when I was reacting when we were pressing, it was more because um, uh, yeah, I had an idea in my head. And then you didn't do it. And I was thinking, oh, I have to think of something else now. But actually thinking of, you know, lots of different possibilities. I mean, that was that was fine. I, I, we, yeah, we played that went well. Yeah, we played well. I mean, we beat um, uh, Arthur Kogan and, and yeah. his um, We had a lovely wife. game, more a gambit game against yeah, more gambit. Really played really well. Uh, I was really uh, and um, yeah, I mean, it was it was quite good. And then uh, afterwards, we had a yeah, we had a tough final against uh, Yona uh, Kosashvili and Sofia Polgar, a really strong pairing. But we. Um, we lost one game because I blundered. <laughs> that was really. Oh, it was quite deep, was, though. This it was so a deep tactic. Queen it was trap. Yeah. A bit, a bit annoying that was. And uh, but then we beat, uh, we beat them in the second game, and then lost the Armageddon. But um, uh, or made a draw in the Armageddon, you know, and, and lost the. Uh, but I mean, it was, it was, uh, yeah, we, we played really well together. But it, it, it takes some, some getting used to like that. But uh, uh, it's. Uh, oh, hack attack yeah. playing hand and brain. Yeah, it, hand and brain is is a love. It's, it's lovely actually. It really is nice, but uh, but it's it's very important to um, yeah for the um, for the hand basically to um, yeah just to be looking at all possibilities that you can play and uh, and then never you know never acting in a shocked way when uh, <laughs> when the brain says something different to what you'd expect it you know because uh, I mean to be honest, engines teachers there are often very many reasonable moves in a position so uh, you mustn't get too hung up on the move that you wanted to play yourself but yeah obviously our at the start when we started on it <laughs> Natasha, yeah Natasha was getting really freaked out by uh, by my reactions I have to say so uh, it's uh, I'm glad we practiced it because that would have yeah. been uh, a bit uh, yeah a little bit yeah. uh, little no bit I'm quite tough. experienced with these games because I also play pair go I've been like oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, national yeah. champion at that like lots of times and um and again, you, you can you can you can kind of tell what your partner's thinking, even though you're not meant to sort of give anything away about what you're thinking. You can always tell. But the worst one we had was when the it was the opponents, and this was really cheating. The um, the, the the girl um, was was going to play a move and sort of hovered over the square. She was going to put this stone on, and then the partner let out this huge sigh. 
At which point she rethought her move and moved it to a different point in the board until his reaction was different. It was terrible. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, the choice of, yeah, but I, I have to, I really, I really enjoyed it. I, I loved this uh, hand and brain. I, you know, we, had a, we had a great time. I mean, it was really, it was really, it really had a lovely time there and uh, playing all that. And uh, yeah, no, it was, uh, and it's, you know, great, great, great fun the chess, really. Yeah, you, you think they should have more events like that, really, because it's so, so much fun, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, sorry, get, getting back to the. Anyway, this is fun. This is fun because this is Lauren's charity, Simul. Um, and it is, it's a great opportunity for juniors to play against international master Lauren da Costa and also to support Lauren in his chess and running marathon, which also sounds like a huge amount of fun. So every three miles, he's going to stop and play a blitz game. Fantastic. Night takes C7. Oh, check. Oh, this looks tricky for black now. Indeed, there's a lot of, a lot of pieces a being lot of material. taken. Takes, takes, knight F3. Oh, it's looking very good for uh, for Lauren here. Lots of pieces up there. Um, oh, 14 games in progress. Uh, Lauren's got one, and the juniors have zero so far. But let's see how it develops. Indeed. So Lauren playing, uh, yeah, just a, a typical uh, Tromposki here, given Black the double pawns. Very typical as well. A good strategy with this... Uh, um, uh, to play this uh, structure with a bishop on g2. That's uh, she's one of my most famous wins. One of the best ever lo loveliest attacking wins came when uh, I got this sort of structure, but um, uh, but white didn't put the bishop on g2, and I whacked black on the whacked white on the king side. But um, uh, the black's doing fine, isn't it? Sorry, isn't aren't they? Uh, this is this is quite pleasant for white actually. It's okay. A bit hard for um, for black to find counterplay in this position. Just very, very solid for uh, for one. I mean, maybe it's fine for Black, but I've I've always felt very uncomfortable. I lost a bad game against um, Ivan Sokolov uh, with Black in this structure, and uh, yeah. felt very unhappy. I have to say. I suppose Black would want to. I guess would want to get it to an end game if they can to try and take advantage. Black's now got this pair of bishops that can be quite um, strong. They work together in an end game. Indeed, it's just um, it's just that the, the structure makes it a bit difficult to use the bishops because uh, uh, if you play f five, then you're hampering this one, you know. So it's yeah. I, I think that's kind of the that was what I found. I just found everything I did had a you know had a slight uh, had a downside slight really. So yeah. uh, I think this is good. Ex this shows you know Lauren's experience really. I think uh, you know he uh, he knows. Uh, um, I think uh, you know we've we've all seen Julian and Mickey playing these positions, and you know uh, yeah you know you sort of. Uh, you pick that up basically through your experience, you know. That's uh, um, so. Let's go back to the start. Um, oh, yeah. White knows. Uh, White certainly knows his theory here because uh, okay. four is the big main line. Uh, it's the line I play as well, actually. Um, rook a six, uh, queen e two, rook a queen a eight. I think this is. Um, I think this is Terry Chapman's favourite. Uh, he's a big Benko player, Terry Chapman. Uh, okay. Uh, and I think this is his favourite way of uh, of playing. Often you uh, you aim for e6 in these positions, break open and try and uh, oops, sorry, do something on on this diagonal, basically. You know, um, but Lauren's gone for a slightly different plan. Rook b8, b3, rook b4. Uh, but I think he's going to play e6 pretty soon here and uh, try and break things open and get everything. Uh, Sort of combining again stuff, and then this king uh, can be weak. So, so what should like, White be doing? What should White be doing here? Um, well, normally, uh, what, what White's done is quite sensible. Although I'm, a, I'm slightly worried about knight d2 because, but yeah, is, on the other hand, White can play f3 here. I mean, the idea really is that White can. Um, uh, what White really wants to do is to play the knight to b5. Yes, uh, at the then, moment it can be taken, can't it? Uh, no, I'd just take it back. Ah, okay. So, so White could play knight b5. Yeah, I mean, uh, normally what happens is that um, it's just uh, I just show you the the, the the basic plan anyway. Um, is uh, um, you want to get the knight to b5, um, and then you've got just this strong structure here where which really blocks the a and the b files. You know, which really ruins uh, Black's counterplay. And then afterwards, you're going to try and uh, um, yeah, you're just going to try and uh, uh, and um, gradually gain a bit of space, maybe on the king's side, and, and gradually cram black. So what Lauren's done with rook b4 is to get ahead of that knight b5 idea. Uh, so if black ever goes knight b5, if white ever goes knight b5, then the rook's already active. It's not stuck behind uh, the b5. So would black just take on e4 then, maybe? 
Well, he would if you went knight b5. Yeah. So that's why white's gone knight d2. Probably going to consolidate with f3 and then try and look for here. And then, of course, at some stage, this rook on b4 might get into trouble. So, um, uh, you know, because uh, you could go bishop d2 and attack it. So, you know, it's uh, a sharp game. Lauren's playing this quite uh, quite sharply. Uh, this is a very normal position. Um, White's developed quite uh, quietly and sensibly. Um, but black's fine. I mean, he's got um, a pawn in the center. Um, all pieces developed. Queen's a little bit funny, but black will probably bring it back to uh, to c7 soon. So uh, about an equal position here. Still in some sort of mainline caro. Um, I'm trying to remember my theory here. White goes g4 here, don't they? Oh, g4. So put, if g4, can you take that? Well, you can, but the lines all get opened up and it's horrible. Yeah, I mean, g4, knight g4, rook g1. Um, if you go knight f6, I go bishop h6. Yeah. And if you go f5, I go queen e6. I'm just wondering, actually, whether um, knight f6, you don't go knight f6 normally. I, no, I think, I think black's got the theory a little bit wrong here. I think normally it's queen c7 here. You stop bishop f4 and you prepare actually to castle queen side. That's what you're trying to do. Um, there are some lines where black castles king's side, but I think this one's a bit wrong. I don't think you should do it in this line precisely. I think g4 is going to be uh, is going to be quite unpleasant for uh, for black because black doesn't really have much counterplay really against the queen side. So it's it's all going to be one way traffic for white there. So I think uh, it's going to be quite dangerous this one. So uh, quite a good position for for Lauren, I think there as well. Um, oh, let's have a look at this one. How's this one gone? So uh, we said that black was going to attack the pawn on b2. So white just defended it. We got knight f5. So the dark squared bishops are probably going to come off. Yes, they have. H5. So just uh, to stop the knight getting driven away by g4. Oh, okay. Knight a4. Queen a5. Oops, sorry. Queen a5. Knight. Oh, knight ec3. That's risky. Uh, because this knights, these knights are uh, are a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, that knight on a4 doesn't have many squares. It can uh, go into c5, can't it? But other than that, yeah. I mean, I, I expect it's probably knight a6 from black here, and then maybe think you're playing b5, um, and just you know making uh, making it harder for this knight to come into c5. Uh, um, I mean, you could also just play queen b4, which wins the d4 pawn. Mm -hmm. So, Guitarman uh, saying, I guess Black hasn't read Who Dares Wins yet. I'm not sure whether that's this game or the previous. It's, uh, um, yeah, so Queen D4 actually just picks up a pawn. Uh, so the D4 pawn this week. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's also looking good for uh, Lauren. Lauren's got a lot of good positions here. Okay. Um, so which which ones do we think the juniors are doing quite well on? Um, and don't say none of them. <laughs> um, well, this one's still quite unclear. So uh, quite early on. So uh, uh, going to see how uh, how Lauren deals with um, uh, with his Grand Prix attack. Ah, uh, yes, he has put his knight in on d four. I was predicting that. Indeed. At an early stage. Indeed. So uh, Lauren's preparing to play knight e7 and d5 there. So uh, uh, white stopped uh, black from going uh, b5, but I think knight e7 and d5 is going to come in. So uh, have to see how white uh, deals with that. Um, let's have a look. I think this one is. Oh, we've got mate in one on the on the board. Here. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Will he see? It? This is Lauren can play mate in one. Will he see it? I wonder. I well, suspect he will. I would <laughs> yeah, expect I he will. He's an international master. He'll see it like a flash. I would bet that. I would bet on that. So now, I mean, General Lawrence got some very good positions. Uh, this one's quite unclear, um, but um, I do quite like White's play here. So have a look at how he went. So we, we're wondering of uh, the four knights, uh, how is Lawrence going to play it? Uh, he played e3, bishop e7, a3, queen c2. Uh, so it's quite a nice uh, system. This just. Um, um, actually, you're just going to put bishop on b2, and at some stage you're going to go for g4, h4, knight, g5. You know, it's quite quite unpleasant. Um, 
Black played maybe a little bit uh, strangely. I mean, um, he played uh, d6 and then afterwards played d5. I mean, sort of thing where you think you could, you know, you could play, play d5 in one move, really. That might have been um, uh, uh, easier. But uh, c takes d5, knight d5, bishop b2, takes, takes, bishop g3, g6, h4. So Lauren already trying to get his... Uh, his attack going and now oh, he is he's trying for an attack down that h file but also backed up by that queen and bishop both aiming at g6 yeah I mean, so bishop g4 is a, a sensible move to defend yeah i mean i'd be tempted to play h5 here to be honest um and if the bishop takes you maybe even sacrifice your rook yeah could do could do or even just knight h2 threatening to trap the bishop with g4 yeah i think this is very i think this is going to be very uh uh it may be quite unpleasant for black, I think. So uh, maybe you can go queen d7, though. Not, uh, how clear is that? Maybe not not so uh, clear, but maybe just rook g1. It's very hard to get that bishop, uh, you know, to get that bishop uh, uh, back into play. If you go g5, then I've got bishop takes h7 check, you know, which is also quite nice. So uh, I think this is quite strong for, uh, for, for white, really. But we'll see what uh, we'll see what Lauren does. He could also just uh, castle queen side. That's also uh, quite interesting. Uh, or you could just play knight h two, you know, and then when the bishop moves away, then you just play h five. That's also uh, possible as well. Two wins. Is that the checkmate we saw? Uh, yes, that's right. That's uh, that checkmate that's happened. There. That checkmate, uh, it happened. just reminded me. I don't know if you ever watched the chase, and um, when your your normal contestants are up against these chasers that know everything, and um, and they they kind of get to this thing, and you know you've got the answer wrong, and then they say, "Do you think the chaser knows it?" And it's like, "Will Lauren see the mate?" And you're like, "You're sure they will, but maybe there's this chance they won't." And he's found it. Um. <coughs> Indeed. Um, Ava, can I, uh, let's have a look. Sorry, I'm speaking Dutch. I've been speaking Dutch all day. Um, mm. Actually, Lauren speaks Dutch, you know. Ah. I, I'm not sure. Now, I'm not quite sure. Why was it? He's told me and I've forgotten. Did he live in Holland for a while? Or has he got Belgian relatives? Something Bel yeah, Belgian. He's got a Belgian connection, I think. Yeah, I think he's got a Belgian connection. So he speaks Flemish, but that's, you know, that's Dutch, obviously. So, uh, yeah. But, um, uh, there are not many foreigners who do put it that way. Not many. Mm. I think uh, I do actually wonder how many how many speak that actually. So, uh, um, but uh, let's have a look. So this was uh, uh, oh yeah, this was where um, uh, Lauren won a piece quite quickly, um, and I think he picked up another piece. Oh yeah, this was this was taken as well. He took oh, and that was another piece as well. So okay. Lauren is three pieces up now. So. Um, and there's a raging attack against the king. So I think this is going to be, um, yeah, I'm not sure that black's going to be able to survive for uh, for much longer in this one. Mm. So if the juniors don't win this match, they can blame Lauren, presumably, can't they? Because isn't he, he's, I think he teaches quite a few of them. <laughs> Good Lord. That's a, oh, uh, I have to say that this game is pretty sharp now. So uh, uh, 92 uh, played. Lauren, as we said, played e6, break open, and but White's reacted very sharply with uh, knight b5. Okay, well that's a, a creative move then. B5 to come in and uh, and aim for this fork on c7. Indeed. So that would be pretty good. So after knight b5, um, yeah. yeah, Lauren's going to have to do something else. Um, now, interesting question actually. What should you do? Um, um this is quite a nice move by white i suppose you can just defend the fork can't you you don't need to give it away queen b7 i think is the most uh normal way of uh of doing it because this rook's very this is why this rook is on a6 okay it's a bit vulnerable to a fork on c7 but it's defending d6 so uh and also um you know something quite typical is takes takes i don't know call f3 or something uh and then you see that the rook is um is defending e6 so uh, against any checks so it's uh, a very good piece but i would say that queen b7 would be my natural move uh now the only question is with all these things um is uh could white play super sharply and play something like knight c4 oh doubly attacking that pawn on d6 
takes here, for example. Oh, I think why it should. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they're quite very sharp. This, I mean, queen c6, you could go e5, maybe just uh, knight e4. I don't a know. Very exciting position, isn't it? Big murky, this one. So, I mean, this one's uh, this one's uh, probably the one of the sharpest ones uh, that the juniors have reached so far. I think it's a very, uh, a very sharp position, this one. Uh, let's have a look. Lauren went G4, indeed, as we predicted. Um, but how is Lauren doing for time now? He has used up. He's used up half an hour now. And actually, yep. his opponent's used up only three minutes. Indeed, indeed. But it's not bad. I mean, he's, he's into move 16, 17. Yeah. So I think, you know... He'll be fine for time, I think, because yeah. he's really yeah. reduced it to 13 games. Yeah, yeah. and I think uh, a lot will have happened before he starts getting really short of time, I think. So, yeah. Uh, um, so here, I think, uh, Lauren, as soon as he comes to the board, he'll play G5. Um, you've got this hook on H6, so uh, it means you're going to open up the king's side, and you, you are just a lot faster than Black's counterplay. I mean, Black's you know, a very long way away from uh, creating any threats there. So looking uh, looking very good for uh, for Lauren on that board. Um, this one hasn't moved very much. I think probably Lauren will play Queen C7, won't he? Uh, I think probably... Uh, Maybe B5 first, but uh, quite, quite a, just a, a normal, sensible position for Black. Ah, Lauren did play Queen B4. So, um, yeah, this pawn now is uh, is doomed. So uh, Lauren is going to pick up a pawn there. Yeah. Um, oh, he's got an H5, Bishop H5. So presumably Lauren's going to play Knight H2 next, I think. Could also decide to play Rook H7, but, I mean, that would also... Rook H5 rather. <laughs> I mean that would be quite that would be quite that I mean, would be exciting. And then try and bring the other rook into yeah. play. You might generally. castle queen side, for example, and put your rook across to h Yeah, yeah. I mean it's generally promising this, you know, but uh I think knight h2 probably is, is uh, strongest, but uh well. So what should black do then? Say Lauren does knight h2. Well I mean, black needs to worry about this um bishop. Yeah, okay. So to stop the pawn going to g4, this queen to d7. So now this Bishop's still at in danger. So I guess you could just drop it now to G4. You could do. Takes, takes. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be decent. I mean, actually, I'm, I'm also thinking that you could go Rook D8 here. And after Bishop there, maybe even start uh, thinking of your own sacks. Mm, that's exciting. So is that a sacrifice? Yeah, I mean, we're going to go D3 after. And this king is actually... Ooh, this is very exciting. So yeah. this could be quite good for Black. This might be quite good for black so um so maybe i mean maybe you could just go castles as well and just uh that would also be possible and just uh um wait a little while um maybe rook h5 is the best you just I'd uh, definitely be tempted by rook h5 just in there and then castles and rook g1 g4 is going to be difficult for black this to uh to uh, defend so um where are we here uh, this one oh this is looking very good for white Almost oh winning. the center's all opened up now and so seven check is going to be huge yeah yeah and look at white seven to d6 it's lined up in the center against that king so it's tricky yeah. for black now it's going to be huge material advantage here for uh, actually i think yeah no probably after uh we'll go d take c7 and then knight b5 um and then you so like knight d6 check. and um can i find knight f7 uh, you could to win some material i can always win material might have better. Yeah. yeah maybe knight e6 check uh i'm not seeing a not seeing a mate here Is somehow which, mate? which amazes me i have to say but uh yeah okay maybe we will just go knight f7 and just pick up a whole rook basically i think that's probably true so um so yeah this is looking very very good for uh for lauren there already uh this board as well um so why it's got some uh, attacking chances here pawn down uh weak pawn here but you've got the f file and uh and some threats um so i guess probably why it's looking to uh move the rooks but uh in principle blacks are pawn up and uh you know just uh quite a bit better there but uh, some some chances we can play W Panda, one of the strongest players in the Simul, uh, but uh, Lauren's doing quite nicely against him. So uh, um, we've got this move A4 to A5, which means that you're going to be able to play uh, B4 
and um, uh, and uh, attack this queen side structure. So um, looking quite pleasant there. Here, oh, black has not. Hmm. What's happening here, actually? Because yeah, Lauren hasn't made a move here somehow. Uh, oh. I hope Lauren hasn't forgotten about one of the games. Indeed, yeah. Um, so this position, uh, Lauren's a piece up. So uh, two bishops, weak pawn here. So looking very good for Lauren, this one. Um, this one we've seen, there's been no move. One move here, bishop eight two. Just getting this out is the of, Grand Prix uh, attack game. Bishop eight d5. Yeah. Um, So bishop d3 from uh, black. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, white can simply play a move like knight d5 here. This bishop's a bit exposed. Um, you go c takes d5, I go queen d3. And this is really worse than the position because this bishop has got uh, you know, a huge amount of scope now. Uh, quite apart from the fact that we're threatening queen e4 check, um, and then hitting b7. So. Um, yeah, I think bishop d3 is really uh, a little bit too much in this position. Knight d5, I think, gives white a uh, virtually winning advantage there. Um, okay. Oh, okay. So uh, uh, Lauren played Ooh. 98. Uh, slightly surprising, to be honest. 98. It does defend the fork. So we, as we saw before, White threat, was threatening this fork with the knight on c7. So Lawrence dropped the knight back to defend. And now White has taken in the centre to try and weaken Black's pawn structure a bit around the king. Yeah. I think I, think I quite like this for White. Well, yeah, no, I, I, I think 98 is a bit odd because uh, you had pressure against e4. And now you're using a, a, a knight to defend against c7. You know, I think you could have... I mean, unless there was something really queen b seven. Oh, was was there a, was there another idea? Actually, was was the idea maybe to? I mean, th there was th maybe this idea of going knight c seven because if queen c seven, I've got queen a six. Aye. So, but I mean, if you do it immediately, then I can just go something like oh, rook b six a five. Wow, okay, so that rook's a little bit. Yeah, I could go rook a seven, but then you go knight e five, and that would you probably have to take a draw by repetition, actually, if you uh, if you did this. Can you drop the rook back to a eight? Yeah, then I can oh, knight knight b6. Six. That's the idea. Yeah, that's good. I, I, don't, I don't know whether I mean maybe you could because you're taking on d five after, so it's not hundred percent clear. But maybe maybe this was the sort of thing that Lauren was thinking. Go, uh, oh, I'm not sure. I mean, yeah. there's also the idea that you could take on e six first. And after takes go knight c7. And then if rook a7, you take on e6, which is quite uh quite interesting. The only, the only thing about that is that there's there's all sorts of ideas like knight e4, you know, with discovered yeah. attacks up. So it, it's quite risky. I mean, maybe maybe Lauren sort of thought, well, you know, let's just uh keep it together nicely and not do anything too crazy. And uh um Yeah, because uh, White still needs to think of some more ideas here. Indeed, indeed. But I'm uh I think white stands very nicely here, to be honest. I think. Uh, mm. So, who's uh, playing white on this game? Uh, that is um, uh, BK George. BK George. Okay, let's keep an eye on BK George. So, this one, oh, Lawrence played his queen back to c7 there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, not much is happening for the moment. Just uh, both sides got their, their pieces uh, developed to decent squares. So, um, yeah. I mean, I'd rather be black, I think, in, in principle, because uh, it feels like black's got a little bit more to do than white. But, um, but yeah, perfectly fine. So here, still waiting for Lauren G5. Maybe it's uh, what we're expecting. Uh, waiting for, oh, knight C5 played. So I guess Lauren will take with a queen on D4 and uh, claim a pawn advantage. Okay, so BK George uh, on his profile says he's got a FIDE rating of 1821. So a strong player. Ah, uh, Lauren took on H5. 
Okay. That's oh, Lauren good, Hess, that's what I would have done. Yeah. That's a good simple move. So, yeah, we're expecting Bishop H7, King G7, Bishop back to E4, Castle's Queen side, Rook G1, and then G4, something like that. Quite dangerous for black. Um, this one, D takes C7, lovely. Get Knight B5 into into d6 i think is what we're expecting and uh really powerful for uh for white i mean i think uh basically winning this position for white okay uh this 13, one... 13 games still in progress and two wins for lauren at the moment indeed we should see so lauren just developing very sensibly here gonna be uh yeah I think White, White needs to drive away this knight from g6, so something with h4. Uh, not quite sure when or how, but uh, that's really what you'd be looking for, I think, with uh, with White, just to uh, to drive the knight away, and then afterwards this bishop can get a little bit of play. There's always f5, though, with Black to block the diagonal, so it's going to be a bit of a toughie for, uh, for White here. Um, B takes a5, okay, so I'd expect... No interesting decision here for uh, for white. Good number of things. I mean, you could. Yeah. I suppose you don't need to take a pawn at all. You could go b five if you wanted. Yeah. But then that a pawn, you then you yeah. It's seven. interesting, but I, I think it's probably maybe a bit too much. I think so. Um, I mean, b a uh, is not completely stupid, but it um, it would block the whole queen side. So. Yeah, this is a very interesting line. I mean, I think probably after knight c5, um, then Lauren will uh, aim just to take on c5 and go rook takes. I mean, you've given up the two bishops, but you've got some uh, some very nice queenside targets to to uh, to hit there. So yeah. uh, um, I think that's probably what uh, Lauren will do. It's a slight advantage for White. Um. So what did you, if you were a junior player, what would your, and you, you knew you were about to do a simul against a, uh, an international master, well, how would you, what would your tactics, what do you, what tactics do you recommend? Difficult to say, really. Um, play reasonably fast, I think, is, is definitely uh, a good idea in a clock yes. simul like this. You know, you've got to keep out of time. <laughs> the, time, the time pressure is a big thing, really. You know, uh, if, uh, you know, uh, I think that's one big thing. Um, and then otherwise, yeah, just try and play sensibly, you know, keep the game long because, uh, yeah, the longer it lasts, you know, the the more under time pressure the GM, the, uh, you know, the title player will be. Uh, and other, apart from that, you've just got to try and play well, haven't you? And um, Yes. Uh, I mean... So check your moves, not going to lose any pieces by your moves. Exactly. I mean, don't do anything silly, you know, and, uh, and then uh, wait for the opportunity because, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I played lots of symbols, of course, and uh, always make lots of mistakes. You know, at some stage I'll uh, get distracted and, uh, and maybe uh, lose something or uh, or play some bad moves. You know, just got to be um, basically you've got, you've got to have a good enough position that you can yeah. um, uh, that you can exploit it when it happens. You know, Take it your opportunities. Be, yeah. yeah, it must be that you're already three pieces down. So then the title player makes some mistakes and gives a piece away, but it doesn't matter anymore. You know, it's uh, I think that's the important thing because uh, random things always happen in symbols. Uh, you know, it's yeah. just. Uh, um so uh yeah i'll tell you one thing not to do i was a junior so doing an in-person simul and nigel short was giving the simul and i can tell you exactly what not to do because nigel short blundered his rook and moved onto the next board and then me as an enthusiastic junior went he's blundered his rook ha 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 which is not what you meant to do and then nigel came back and changed the move he literally did. No, he'll never hear this. But but this this is a true story, and then he won the game. Wow! He said, he said, "I can do that until I've played a move on the next board." So I should have kept my mouth shut. Indeed. Yeah, uh, it's. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simul. <laughs> I say simul etiquette varies. Uh, um, I um. Uh, yeah, I think I think, I don't I think say, I'd go back and change a move. I'd play. No, I, I think I can say that even if I've touched a piece in a symbol, I, I, I make the move. I think. Uh, I think. But I'm, I think uh, probably Nigel felt justified because I would. I did this kind of gloaty reaction, and and maybe he's right about that. 
It'll certainly, uh, you'll certainly. Uh, uh, I've certainly been very modest ever since. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so it um, uh, looks like Lauren's going to pick up another piece here with Queen E3 check. So that one's uh, looking very good for Lauren. Uh, F3 was played to stop Queen H1, mate. Um, do, do, do. Um, oh, this one's uh, uh, Rook and two pieces up, Lauren, at the moment. So, uh, Gosh, that's a lot. Uh, I think Knight H4 is going to happen next, forking the Queen, then coming with Knight F5. I don't think uh, this game's going to last much longer for Black, unfortunately. Um, <coughs> on Grand Prix attack, White's played E5, quite sharp. I think Black will play D6, just try and uh, uh, open this up. And um, Black's uh, black's fine here in this position. Uh, not uh, in principle, they're doing quite nicely. Um, that's mate. A uh, knight b5 played by Lauren. Yeah, but both both are. Uh, oh, this is this is better, of course. Uh, after c takes b5, um, Lauren will play c takes b5, and hitting the bishop and also hitting the queen as well. So uh, yeah, that's just uh, that's really really bad for Black man. But this move, bishop d3, was a bit too uh, too risky. Um, and that one's uh, made. So let's have a look. Oh, this one's a nice sharp one. Uh, oh, white yes, this, this is a very exciting white game. So. Three, 95, bishop b2, queen b7. So, uh, so black's defended against this fork. And then you were thinking, oh, it's a slightly different position. Because you were going to bring a knight in and attack d6 again. But we can't do that now. No, well, I mean, Lawrence uh, uh, played a very important move because um, the idea is that after um, bishop c3, he could play rook b5. Oh, and there's a pin. So if queen takes b5, queen takes, pawn takes, and then rook a3. Yeah. So that's very important. Um, uh, so now, um, we have West got to think about what he's going to do. I mean, the natural move would be to play something like, um, they've got to watch out that there's no sort of trickies, uh, happening. Um, hmm. not clear. There's, 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 uh, there's, there's going to be stuff happening. I mean, uh, if, if I had a natural move, you know, if, if I was playing a symbol with white, I'd probably yeah. play, uh, um, a sort of a rook d1 or something, you know, just to get mm. my, my rook developed and maybe think about moving my king somewhere else. You've got to watch out for for, for tricks involving knight discoveries because the bishop on b2 is loose. Yeah. So, for example, you know, knight takes f3 is kind of interesting. You'd have to take back with the knight to keep that bishop defended. Yeah, I mean, the idea is if you take, I'll take on here. Uh, and if rook takes, rook takes e4. It's that sort of idea, basically, you know, with uh, mm. this sort of thing. So, um uh knight f3 could play knight takes f3 defending the bishop um i go but for example um uh yeah i mean i could try rook e4 maybe but you go queen c2 you know so uh this one's probably probably holding although yeah i don't know i mean there's uh there's some sort of ideas like this you know which are not necessarily completely easy to deal with but probably for, you've got enough but these are these are ideas that um you know you can definitely think of um, mm. So, um, but the question is, it's a little bit of a question, that how is black going to build stuff up more? I mean, in principle, white's going to play rook a1 and, and probably bishop c3. That's one of the ideas. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I, I yeah. mean, I like white in principle. I mean, I think white's probably better, you know, quite a bit better in this position. But, uh, but obviously, there's plenty very of nice. it's yeah. still very unclear. Yeah. Right. Now, for any juniors watching this back, um, in case you don't know about it, the British Championship is on um next weekend and uh, so there's age group sections i think under 18 14 16 12 10 and 8 so there's a lot of choice um based on your age and i think it's being played in milton Keynes. and matthew and i are going to be doing commentary online so if you do play in that uh then hopefully we will pop in on your game and uh, and and commentate there indeed fantastic looking forward to it um let's have a look we've got some more action in some of the other games we've got uh, uh this one still quite solid nothing uh enormous happening there uh lauren uh, uh to move in this one uh i'm not sure maybe try and swap off you always got to watch out for that bishop on h4 you can't can you play 
This is probably, can you play a tactic like knight takes e4? Probably not, because uh, I can just take on here, I think. Yeah, and if you take on h4. Yeah, if you take on uh, on h4, I take on c5. Take on c5, and you haven't got enough pieces, so that, that tactic doesn't work at all. No, so it's an idea. I, I think probably with black, uh, I'd be thinking of swapping off the dark square bishops, uh, probably, just to free my position a little bit. Maybe knight d7, something like that. So I think it's a slight advantage for black, really, but uh, but but nothing uh, nothing uh, yeah. worrying really yet. So uh, um, here, ooh, ooh, galore. Oh, gosh. Five. All black. white storming ahead on the king side. Black taking h seven, so we can just pick up a piece there if we want. So um, and actually, maybe I think you will. Lauren's white here, Lauren. I think Lauren will. Yeah. I think maybe even queen d3 check might be even stronger. And then when the king moves, we take on here. That could also be very, <coughs> very scary. So, uh, but yeah, I think I just take a piece and uh, and is just winning there. Um, doo -doo -doo. Queen d4, to so Lauren still to move, but I think queen, d, queen d4 will be the move. Winning a pawn. Uh, yeah, this one, uh, bishop b2 played. So queen d3. Played to meet uh, castles with queen a3. So oh, Lawrence yes. throw the bishop back to b2, and he's going to follow up with castles, rook g1 and g4. I think that's going to be uh, a, a, a bit unpleasant for black group. This one, Lauren's got to work out uh, a mate. Um, a little bit of a mate, actually. Much to my surprise, I have to say. Um, so, I mean, there's loads of ways of playing. I mean, knight, knight b5 check simply wins a piece. That's got to play knight d4. So, I mean, that, that would be as good as any win. But uh, a bit surprised I can't think of a mate. Maybe it doesn't exist. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, no, that's not mate. It's mm -hmm. a lot of material, but yeah, yeah. No, I mean, loads of ways for white to win, but... Uh, I can't really think of a mate there. So, uh, knight c5, white keeping it going. Uh, Lauren, a little bit short of time on this game. So, white's playing very, very fast, you see. So, that's uh, quite good. Uh, bishop c8 would be the natural move, I think, I guess, for me, just with uh, um, protecting the pawn, getting the bishop out of the attack of the knight, and uh, letting the rook attack the pawn on d4. I mean, principle, it's a very nice position in the back. So who I'm going to look at which junior has the most time left. LP Chess has 24 minutes. Oh, BK George has 29 minutes left. Oh, yeah, he's playing well. He's playing fast as well. So I think uh, they get a little increment. Is that right? 30 minutes plus 30 seconds. So they do get an increment. So the further through the game, they might get more okay. time for the juniors. So um, uh, WP Panda here. So when it's changing off queens, it's a better position for white, this. Uh, lots of weak pawn. Uh, queens coming off. So, yeah, no no, no kingside uh, counterattack to worry about. So, uh, yeah, it's a very nice position for white. Um, Lauren's played this very well so far. Um, moving on. Uh, yeah, this was a, a weird one, really. Um, oh, good lord. Black just left a, a, a piece on prize. C takes B4. So, uh, okay. So that's a piece for, uh, for Lauren. So uh, looking pretty good. Two pieces up here for Lauren. So, um, uh, yeah, that should also be, uh, you'd expect uh, that Lauren will finish this one off quite quickly. Um, what have we got here? Uh, bishop g7 so with two, rook and two pieces up here uh, for Lauren so uh, I guess queen b7 here and uh, yeah. okay pool. should we see how bk george is getting on in that benko uh, we certainly can so he's played rook d1 so Lauren's uh, thinking here rook d1 was the move that we uh, we said uh, we expected um I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure what Lauren uh, is supposed to do in this position. It's uh, quite new for me. Long day at work. It's been, um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's quite a tricky position for Black. If the tactics aren't working, then it's a bit hard to see what he what he might be doing. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, you could play uh, Knights, and um, well, you'd what you'd like to do is go Knight C7, I think, but that obviously loses a um, a rook there. And I was thinking we could. No, you can't actually do that. I was thinking maybe we can go here and come here, but uh, and then we get well, then I think we just go Bishop C3 and pick up this rook. So I don't know. I'm not. I'm not really sure what um, what, what Black's going to do here. If the tactics aren't working, then um, it might be a bit tricky. Yeah. Okay. So promising for BK George. Indeed. Um. I mean. No, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I think Black's in a bit of trouble, to be honest. I think uh, this uh, he, he sort of run out of, of active moves, really. And uh, and and, you know, then so the weaknesses that he's created to get activity are, are just going to tell somehow. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, Black's in a bit of trouble here. OK. Um, let's have a look. Has there been any action anywhere? Let's see. Who else? What about um, Navy app? Yeah, we're still waiting for Lauren to move here. Ah. So, uh, Queen takes d4, wins a pawn there. So, uh, I wonder where Lauren is at the moment, actually. Where is he spending his time? Um, yeah, games. I mean the the board that's lit up on mine is is the one against BK George. I don't know if that means he's looking at that board. Uh, maybe that does. Maybe that does mean that he's looking at that one. It's. Uh... It would make sense. It's a tricky one. He's got a bit of thinking. Ah, Mabrunga, Mabrunga says everyone try and survive, then we win on time. Yes, that's the plan. That's it. Teamwork, juniors. Teamwork and. Uh, yeah, all keep your games going, make it as tricky as you can. And uh, yeah, that helps the time on all the boards. And the other thing is if you play quickly when Lauren's not at the board, <laughs> that helps That helps your time. Yeah. You should encourage juniors to play quickly. You do make sure you play a sensible move that you're thinking about. That's what happened to me in two of my simuls. Really? If everyone just played quick? Well, yeah, I mean, you were there, weren't you? For, for, for I, I remember, I remember that. That yes, I do. I, I grew a symbol fifteen fifty. Yes, <laughs> with, uh, with uh, quite a few losses on time, I have to say. I do remember. So uh, yeah, um, yeah. I, I'm trying to think what what Black could do here. I think I think uh, I think this uh, the, the board lit up. Well, I don't know, El Panda. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think the board lit up means that Lauren's looking at this one at the moment, but. I'm not really sure what I can recommend to him. All right. What about? Maybe, maybe we should go. Okay, eight. King h8. H5, maybe. If you don't know what to do, always just play h5. I think that would probably be my uh, recommendation. And then we'll uh, we'll see. I, I mean, I, I, seriously, I want to get my king to h7 a bit out of the way, and then I can maybe look to open up the center and it won't be so bad for my king you know i think that's probably uh, what i'd be thinking of in a simul anyway you know yeah um, but i haven't seen any more action on any other boards in actual what about I've phoenix been... chaser that that must be the um is that yeah. the so, i think we know which move lauren's going to play next he's going to take that knight Actually, and then white needs to decide what to do with the knight. I suppose you just drop it back to e2. Yeah, I mean, actually, it's quite interesting because I, I was expecting uh, Lauren to play um, uh, d6 here and, you know, really attack this pawn on e5. Um, but he played d5. So that means after takes, takes um, uh, knight e2. Suppose yeah. maybe 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 Lauren's going to play f6, maybe something like this. Possible, break up the pawn structure like this and uh, and play like this. Possible. I guess this pawn is uh, is is uh, sort of stimming this bishop on a2. So 
I quite like the idea of breaking open the center with d6, but maybe, maybe this is maybe quite a decent uh, a decent way of playing as well. Just uh, just a different way of uh, of playing. But I think uh, I think Lawrence. Uh, I haven't seen any moves on any other boards, so I think Lawrence thinking a lot about this one. I think he's got to be Well, he's got to be careful. He's down to half an hour. Yeah. And then the opponents have half an hour too. Yeah, I mean, I think you can you can easily just uh, yeah, it's not just one board that you're losing time. You're losing board. I, I I mean that was something I had just hadn't realised when I did the simul. Yeah. It was on it wasn't just on the board where you're thinking that you lose time. It's all over on every single board when you're thinking you're losing time you know and I, I just hadn't hadn't understood this at all yeah so you can you can by um trying to save one tricky position you can kind of jeopardize the whole, the whole rest of your position exactly yeah exactly he's played knight f7 here which was was not yeah it was a possibility sir yeah again i'm not 100 percent sure about it really but yeah, yeah, definitely a possibility. I mean, maybe Lawrence. I don't think he would be though. I mean, you you could um, you could uh, uh, try and play Bishop G seven, meet it with Rook B five because A three is hanging now. But I think you know with White you just play Bishop C three and this diagonal is uh, you know it's very pleasant for uh, for White. So yeah, yes. I mean, I, I, I think, uh, okay, I, I think it is this. So so I think Lauren is now thinking against Michelle Chan. Ah, okay. Because yeah. that one's lit up. A queen. Ooh. That's Lauren spotted a mate that I haven't seen. Quite conceivably. <laughs> what? Uh, so, how's this going? Rook c8. What's oh, is Lauren he going to go knight b7? Well, no, we go knight d. I mean, the point was what I was thinking of. I thought we'd just go knight f5 or something. Isn't knight b7? What does black do? Knight b7 check. Are you going to d4? I mean, I, I give away pieces. I mean, that's the thing. You know, so, uh, I'm winning material all over the shop, but I, I'm just trying to think what, why did Lauren go c8? Because it blocks uh, off the c8 square from the king. Yeah, maybe just go knight f5 anyway and just take all this. I mean, that's also. Yeah. I'm not sure that you need to go c8. Okay. All, uh, it's a pretty decent move anyway so uh it's winning there but uh obviously it's a i think a little thing with the time there so playing phoenix chaser now nice c6 played and i think f6 will come in quite quickly and uh we'll just claim that uh, okay we've got double pawns but uh we're restricting this bishop on a2 so uh, it's never really going to get into the game again so oh we can follow uh lauren so. hello lauren <laughs> rookie one bringing the bringing all the pieces into the party Yes. So, uh, so in this game, Lauren hasn't bothered castling. Okay, he's taken the taken the knight there. Piece up on that board. Uh, oh, he's taken the queen. That was a pretty obvious move. I played knight f five, check knight d four. So, yeah, I mean we can do it in various ways. A rookie seven check is a nice attempt. I've done it. Looking for king. Looking for uh, king d eight. What was the finish here, Natasha? Ninety-six checkmate. Very nice. Great. So I think that's what he's looking for. I mean, king c six is possible. Then we go knight d four check, and uh, that's just winning, of course. I don't think he's got anything better than that. That is pretty good, it must be said. Yeah. Uh, oh, rook h1 he's played. I was thinking about rook g1, g4, but yeah, actually, this is a very nice move, rook h1, because black's gone rook fd8. Moving this rook over here. So now Lauren's going uh, rook h1. So that rook will have to come back to there. Uh, that's not a bad idea. And I think that Lauren, probably Lauren, after, if, if black goes rook h8, he'll probably go rook g1, then just look for g4 to g5, I think. It's quite nice attacking chances mm. for white. d3, so f6, I think. Actually, it's been a long time since. Anyone's got a result? Indeed, there's a, there's a few that are quite close, but uh, I think, but uh, um, uh, but uh, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing yet. So against BK George, uh, Bishop G seven, King G seven was played. So uh, so I think uh, yeah, I mean, 
I think Lauren's probably looking just to, for the moment, just to hold a little bit. Uh, the rook's safe on b4. Uh, it's certainly rook b5, actually. Um, so, uh, yeah. I think, you know, what could white do? Yeah, like I mean, no knight c4 couldn't because that defends the rook on a3. Yeah, I mean, the, the key question is whether d5, but no, it doesn't work at all. So, uh, probably go queen takes c8 there. Yeah, d4, rook d7. So, <laughs> oh, that's very good for white if it, white can get that. So, knight c4 would be a good move, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit miserable for black, this really. Probably play king g8 or something like that, just get out of any checks, but yeah, it's, it's a toughie for black, this one. Um, so he's looking at this position yeah you've won a piece how do you continue i mean ideally you'd really want to to aim for a quick mate really so uh it's a good yeah. general move knight e5 maybe get queen e4 knight g4 bishop h6 who knows something like that uh you need some quick you need to keep on going for quick wins here because uh you know, if you get too short of time with too many balls, it uh, it goes difficult. So, um, yes, yeah. you could get a very exciting end to the session if that happens. Indeed. So just a piece up in this one, B4. So, uh, yeah, just a question of getting the moves done. Rook H8 played. So I'm expecting Rook G1 from, uh, from Lauren now just to... Uh, 9H4 is conceivable. Looking for knight f5, and um, uh, if you uh, if you take on there, I take and then play for f4 afterwards, possible. But um, I probably I, I probably think be thinking of rook g1. I think. Um, Lauren has taken on d4 here, by the way, as we expected. <coughs> so just to pawn up. Ah, Black avoided. Um, uh, I avoided the checkmate. C six, but uh, Lauren now is just uh, yeah. He's up with uh, a lot of threats. Nice C three. Yeah, this is very solid for White. Uh, this whole um, oops, sorry. This whole uh, structure here is really solid, and we just got. Um, Weak pawns to aim at here, so uh, a very, very pleasant position for uh, for white. This BK George, which I think is costing Lauren a lot of time actually this game. So uh, BK George playing very fast, it must be said. He hasn't played uh, knight c4. He's gone rook a1, but that's very solid. Um, I mean, actually, the rook will, will sort of redeploy itself. It wasn't doing much on a3, so in a way, defending it whilst it's on a3 is maybe not so interesting. But rook uh, going to come round to c1. Yeah. I mean, maybe just aim for rook c3 and then rook d3, you know, that sort of thing. Defend b3 from the third rank and start uh, piling up on the d-file. I think Lauren teeing up for some counterplay with d5 now. I think that's what he's aiming for. But I think rook c1 simply is, is a good move. Because uh, now, uh, yeah, if you go d5, then c5 will be hanging. So, yeah. It's a difficult position for uh, for Lauren this one. Mm. We've really got to make sure that uh, that that one difficult game doesn't uh, you know <laughs> doesn't ruin it, doesn't ruin the whole thing because uh, um, so playing nice and fast. Yeah, this is not, not not a super easy one to play for uh, for, um, for for black. It takes a little bit of uh, of care. Maybe I mean I'd be tempted with black just to. Uh, to go, um, what would I be tempted to do? You What's would be going? tempted to go knight g5. I would probably be tempted to do that, but it's a little bit risky tactically because uh, if I went knight, oops, if I went uh, knight g5, you could uh, chop a rooney and take here. Oh dear. So yeah, you can go rook d1, knight d1, but after knight g5, you can take on here because uh, here uh, uh, allows this, so maybe maybe you just end up taking. But I'll oh, take a knight g five. Actually, sorry, it's uh, ah yes, it's, it's walking. Ah, this is winning a pawn probably. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Who did it with that basil brush? No, it was punch, wasn't it? 
Oh, of course. Yes, Judy. That's true. That's the way to do it. Oh, oh. What's happened with BK oh, George? Oh, that's evil. Oh. Ooh. So Lauren was uh, played knight f6 just to um, uh, develop the pieces, and he's he's uh, left um, a tactic open there. Gosh. Knight okay. Seven. So if that knight gets taken, then um, then white can come in and take that rook on a6. And otherwise, okay. the rook moves. White can take on e6 check. So white's winning a pawn here. Yeah, it was already a Benko pawn up, of course. So. So this, then are we, are we, is it too strong to say it's winning for white now? No, 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 it's, it's definitely winning for white now. Definitely winning for white now. So, uh, yeah. Ah, three wins. Ah, three, three wins. wins. What's happened? Uh, one of the games must have finished. Uh, what, uh, Haruma, Haruma, indeed. Haruma's uh, finished. What do we get? Rooksy takes, we took that one. Takes, oh, he took a lot of pieces there. And that was checkmate. Gosh. Hey, Julio. Hello, Julio. How are you doing? We're looking at um, Lawrence de Costa's doing a simul uh, for the in aid of the Stroke Association, and um, he is going to run the marathon in October, and um, and every three miles he's going to stop and play a game of blitz. I bet nobody's ever done that before. I don't think so. No, it sounds uh, very unusual. So, uh, uh, Lauren says sack the exchange against BK George. Um, so, um, by the way, I, I, I'm I'm right, aren't I, Julio? You, you've recently had a had a had a new a new addition to the family. You you've recently had a baby with your uh, with your girlfriend, haven't you? With your wife, sorry, I'm. Uh, uh, I just on Facebook. I'm sure I, I saw it. So. Uh, um, if so, yeah. congratulations. Congratulations, uh, Julio. It's uh, your baby looked uh, looked absolutely lovely. I have to say, he looked absolutely fantastic. So uh, very well done indeed, and to uh, uh, to both you and your partner as well. It's uh, really uh, really lovely. So uh, um, let's have a look. So um, okay, so gonna... Lauren's given up the exchange. Yeah, um, unfortunately, there's there's quite a few weaknesses still. Um, I, I'd be tempted just to throw in h5 and just wait to see what white does, to be honest. Um, yeah. But it's very, uh, this is just a very good position for white. You just can't uh, get around that, really. Um, but Lauren's got quite a few very good positions here, so um, uh, let's have a look. This one looking like it's going to be, uh, um, I think you go you go e5 and then afterwards you go rook c8 to c1. Uh, that's going to be uh, a pretty uh, a pretty quick win. Look how fast White has played there. Gosh, yes. Um, oh, d5 from Lauren. So Queen E6 was what I was sort of thinking there. But maybe Lauren's going to try and play Knight G5 and then get uh, get a bit of uh, sneaky counterplay going. Oh, he might. So maybe White should take on D5 first. Possibly that's uh, that's better. But um, ah, Lauren's going to get a bit of counterplay. So it's not uh, far from over yet, I think. But. Um, uh, so look, Lauren uh, playing this one very solidly. Just, uh, um, yeah, nice solid kingside. Going to play queen d5. Got lovely light squares. But, yeah, this is Mabrungo who said uh, play fast and run okay. short. So uh, definitely doing his stuff there. Yeah. It's got to be the way for the junior team. Okay. Fast so has got to be the tactic. F4, A5. So uh, Lauren... Uh, yeah, a piece up, you know, he's, he's, he's up material in quite a few games. But, uh, yeah, I mean, sort of know that, um, um, uh, yeah, not easy to put away, you know, and uh, your time ticks down all the time. So uh, still quite thrilling. Ah, Lauren, quick, very quickly back to the board. Queen d5 would be my instant, uh, instant uh, move, I have to say. 
<laughs> just uh, hitting there. Yeah, F6 is also a good positional move. Stopping knight G5. In principle, black's, black's just winning this one. Uh, mm. Extra pawn, uh, weak pawn on D4, good bishop. But uh... Ooh, knight G5 played. So is knight G5 possible here? Sorry, queen E6 played. Is knight G5 possible? That was what I thought. Yeah, okay. So what happens if knight G5 is hitting the queen? Um, so queen across. Yeah, the only problem is that... Um... What's the follow-up taking on e4? Is that the well, I mean, I'm also thinking about queen d7, actually. is what I'm wondering about. To try and come in on h3 with check. Question is, I mean, is this any good? Well, I mean, e5, queen h3 check, king somewhere, knight h5. Why not? Why not? Why not? You've got rook takes b3 ideas afterwards. It's a very unclear position, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's good for white, but um, but I think it's quite uh, it's going to be murky at, the, at this time control. So twelve games still in progress. Lauren's got three wins so far, and uh, the time is getting a little bit lower for Lauren. So he's um, how long has he got? He's got a sort of twenty five minutes, I guess, on most boards. For twelve games left, so so that that sort of evens out at two minutes aboard. But remember, you do get an increment, so it's not as fast yeah. as that. Um, actually, yeah, and and here he's been. Um, uh, there's been a bit of a bit of a blunder here because uh, he went knight h4 as we uh, suggested. That was one of the ideas. Yeah. Um, but uh, black played b5, allowing knight f5 <gasps> check. So the oh, queen's gosh. gone, and, and now the knight's going as well. So uh, oh gosh, that one's, uh, that one's turned. Uh, Turned uh, um, uh, Black's uh, Lauren's way as well now. So uh, okay. Uh, this one here, he picked up a pawn. Oh, Those actually, tricky night forks. Uh, no, actually, knight takes a four simply, uh, and even spotted that because uh, I was looking to fork and win e four, but uh, knight a four was simply winning a pawn. So he's a pawn yeah. up to two, but it's going to be a long one. So um, uh, that's not going to be easy. Peace up here. Um, but uh, but black sort of solid. It's going to take a little while to get uh, to get past him. Maybe you should just go for queen d three, swap off the queens, and then just uh, you know it's just trivial really. I think that's maybe the the simplest. Um, he's a pawn up here. Maybe going to be a bit of a long game, but um, but you, you know black's a clear central pawn up. So uh, you go f six, uh, get rid of this pawn, and then come on the e file, advance the pawns. You know, should be uh, should be pretty good. Um, this one we've seen. This one. Um, uh, okay, so this was one where we were looking for any possibilities of checkmate. Mm -hmm. um, so, white's a piece up. I guess if you drop your rook back to e6 check. Uh, white will come out. Black will come out to King C five. I would think. Yeah, not, not so easy. You're you're sort of attacked and forked. You are. Um, I mean, you can avoid a material loss, but I don't see that you're getting particularly. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'd probably just just say, okay, I'm going Rook C four check and uh, yeah, just swap things off and swap things off and just keep it uh, safe. Just take the win, really. It's uh, it's weird. Sometimes you see positions like that, and you think there must be a mate, but nothing's obvious. So, uh, Lauren's thinking on uh, on this board actually, but uh, I think, well, yeah, you know, just uh, him, yeah, he's, he's done rook c four. That's uh, he's just going to take on c eight, and then uh, just uh, you know, just be a, a piece up for for no compensation, piece and a pawn up actually. So. Uh, So here, um, yeah, I mean, here, I think you can just play maybe a few quick moves. Um, knight g5, maybe round to e6, play g6, king g7, h5, and then gradually start getting yourself moving. Yeah, what should white be playing for? I'm not sure, really. I mean, it's uh, white's basically just a pawn down there. So, oops, sorry. 
Well, it's basically just a, um, a pawn down here. So uh, um, hard to say, really. Maybe try and get some, some, a little bit something going. Get the queen active. Get some perpetuals. Queen to f5. Yeah, possible. You, you're covered though, you know. So uh, by the knight yeah. on six, so yeah. nothing. Yet. So yeah, just gonna... white's got to like, wait for you know, hope something goes wrong for black. Yeah, I mean, I, I go. Oh, I wouldn't go queen e3. I would have gone knight e3. Um, uh, maybe h4, g3, king g2. You know, and uh, and then wait for something to happen. You know, I think that yeah. would have been my uh, after queen e3. This is quite yeah. Now it's just a technical ending, really. You know, because there's no. There's no sense in which uh, White's going to be able to uh, to get at you at all. So you know you should you're just a pawn up basically. Um, uh, let's have a look. So, the juniors are being very resilient in uh, in keeping the games going. They they we've only had three results so far, and. Yeah. Um, it's been going how long? Nearly two hours. <laughs> Nearly two hours, yeah. No, it's uh, more actually, isn't it? Uh, two hours and ten minutes, I think. So, uh, yeah. so at six thirty. Yeah. Two hours minus ten minutes. So, um, uh, oh, good lord! Look at uh, what's happened on Phoenix Chasers board. Oh, well, let's see. F five. Ooh. Uh, it's a very, very, very creative, but I'm not sure that it's going to work really. Because after G takes F5, um, it's looking pretty solid for uh, for Black. Not really sure what uh, what White can do about that. You go E F Queen F6. You haven't. I mean, the idea, I, I guess, was to to uh, to open up the, the lines for this bishop, but. You've still got this wall of pawns here, so uh, I think that uh, that Lauren's getting the upper hand in uh, in this one as well. I think Lauren's thinking he'll play G takes F five. I'm pretty sure F takes E five. We are. I don't know. F takes E five would also be possible as well. Come to think of it, now nah, he's played this. And after takes, we'll take there. That's also uh, quite strong. Again, why they can't really make much yeah. uh, headway against this. Um, uh, this black structure, really. Um, three wins so far. So uh, this one uh, uh, now, because of uh, black splendor looking very good for uh, for white, uh, bishop takes e5 would be the most uh, obvious yeah. thing. Uh, so I don't think that one's going to last much longer. Um, oh, let's have a look. What happened here? Queen e6. Oh, yes. Uh, rook b6. Rook b6. Hmm. Queen h3. Oh, okay. Going going for a little bit of a trap -a rooney of the queen. Queen's quite short of squares. So knight. Uh, yeah, I mean, knight g5, there would have been uh, queen h4, unfortunately, which is, uh, yeah, just got enough squares there. So uh, he's played d takes e4 here. So, yeah, I don't know. If you go knight e4, then I can get my rook with active with rook b3, maybe. I'm not sure really. I think, uh, yeah, I think knight e4 would actually be quite a good move. I think f takes e4 would also be quite a good move, to be honest. Um, I'm not quite sure what black should really be, what black yeah. is really trying to do there. There's going to be some 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 tactic somewhere, but uh, yeah, I think uh, white's in a bit of, con you know, white's got quite a bit of good control there. Uh, peace up here for uh, Lauren. So uh, looking good. So I think I'm going to need to dial off in about 10 minutes to have dinner. <laughs> really? Yes. You mean you're putting your dinner above chess, Natasha? Well, I'm hungry. <laughs> yes. If anyone's ever met Natasha when she's hungry, she'll know that that's <laughs> not uh, that's a synonym for angry. No. <laughs> <laughs> um only teasing um mm -hmm. this is looking very strong we've got rook f7 check coming in queen takes e8 so uh, looking very strong oh gosh that's checkmate uh oh we could have checkmate here very soon don't ask me how 
It's one of those games where you kind of think it must be almost over and then you can't uh, I, 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 In a symbol, I just go, oh, B3 is also uh, clever. I mean, I'd probably go King D2 or B3 like this and just uh, sort of um, try and uh, coral the Black King. It's um, uh, this one, Lauren's thinking. So he's a uh, uh, I guess he'll go B5, yeah. He's going to get a pass. Oh, the, the, the wouldn't play the knight onto d4. Yeah, I'd play the knight into d4 now, probably, and then go a4 at some stage. And uh, yeah, yeah that does stay. look nice for black. Very, very nice. So, um, uh, yeah, this is another very good position for, for uh, black. Probably just come come with the with the pawns and just uh, gain some space. Very little that that uh, that uh, white can do there really. Um, so Mabrunga playing super fast. Um, oh, a bit of There's a fork of the old Rookaroonies there. Another so, night fork. We've seen it, several of them today already. Yeah, it's starting to collapse this one for white. I'm afraid. So uh, I think Lauren's going to win this one quite quickly. I think. Uh, w Panda, let's have a look. Uh, rook f5. Uh, I mean, the natural move, if you can play it, is to go knight d2 and then just come in with knight e4, blockade this square. And uh, yeah, very nice position for black, for white rather. You know, just a uh, uh, lovely pawn strike <laughs> uh, playing against passive black pieces. So I, I think winning for white that one uh, as well. This one is definitely winning for white. Oh, um, yes. Mate in the black, uh, black, you mean? The black, rather, yeah. Mate in a few moves. Uh, we just play rook g2 and then d2 and d1. So that's going to be uh, winning. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, what else have we got? Ooh, the king's being chased here. So uh, mate in uh, rook g2, in actual fact. f4 and uh, queen g6 check. Or queen takes f5 and queen g6 check. That's also mate. That's mate. Yeah. So looking pretty good for uh, for uh, uh, for Lauren there. Oh, it's black move. Sorry, but uh, yeah, it's not going to make much difference. Um, uh, let's have a look. Um, ooh, rook takes e3. My goodness, oh, that's exciting. I think it's going to be <laughs> I could take c3, yeah. which I think is uh, uh, I don't really good enough. Not really sure. Black you takes then you'd go bishop h6. Yeah, I go f4 then. And then there's no more, no more scary checks. No, no. So uh, I think Lauren's starting to get. He's starting to get a, getting a the whole, upper hand. Yeah, he's going to have a whole um, run of wins. I think. Uh, yeah. And then that means that, um, yeah, you know that um, that his uh, um, that, that, that he has more and more time, and his opponents get less and less time. So uh, I think the it, it, it's um, it's one of those things in symbols that um, you have a certain tipping point, you know, where uh, yeah. um, if people last just enough, long enough, then the then the uh, the title players in time trouble. But um, but otherwise, um, uh, you know, if you reach that tipping point, you get rid of enough uh, of your opponents, then it is suddenly a big advantage for the um, uh, yeah. And here we are. It's four we, wins now for Lauren. Indeed, it was. Uh, oh no, it was really White's move to play, and uh, he played Queen F5, check King H6, Queen G6, checkmate. Checkmate. Very well played, uh, Lauren there. So um, Phoenix Chaser uh, pawn up there, but. Uh, yeah, passive pieces for white. So uh, I think um, again, looking very good for uh, for Lauren. Uh, this is the key game, really. Um, uh, so um, there's definitely going to be some some counterplay here coming. So uh, white's got to be a little bit careful here. So yeah, black's um, trying to gang up on the white king. Yeah, I mean, right. knight f3 is coming in. Yeah. The big question, really, I suppose, is whether you know, could you just play a6 in this position yeah. and just ignore it all? I'm also thinking white might want to get the queen a bit better. Well, the queen on h3 restricts the knight on e5, really. Okay, because so. otherwise rook d7 is coming. Yeah, for example, if I go rook b2, king h1, knight f3, then you go rook d7. I see, yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. So I suspect that you can just push the pawn. There's maybe okay. not that much counterplay. I mean, queen c6 could be possible, but then I go rook d5, I think. I think this is the key point. And uh, so I think this one's uh, probably... Uh, Ah, uh, yeah. I think. Uh, oh, Queen E six played. Queen E six. Okay. That's also quite a powerful move, I suppose. Um, wondering. I mean, we we play Rook B two, I think, and then we just uh, see where where White's intending to go. Actually, H one. I might go C four. I don't know. Yeah. It's very difficult. I think this is probably uh, just 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 losing for white. I think for for black rather. But um, yeah, this is looking very good. Uh, Lauren's doing a nice technical job here. So probably will play king takes b4, followed by knight b4, taking on b3. Good technical game there. So uh, I think this one's uh, yeah, this one's going to be uh, winning quite soon. Uh, this one is winning as well, of course, just an extra piece. He, that's what Lauren did. Lauren was very sensible. Yeah. Oh, Bishop d6 actually wins. Uh, Bishop d6 another, and skewer the two rooks. Another exchange, really. So um, looking very good. Oh, and it's five wins now for Lauren. Oh, I think we've got mate in one here. There we are, mate in one. Five right. wins. We saw it. Six wins. Six wins. Uh, where was the other win? Uh, oh, this one. Yeah, this was. Uh, this ended up in... Um, uh, in mate here. Oh, so, yes. There we are. Mate. So six wins. The nine lawn mower mate. So, um, and we've got, uh, well, we've got a few more that are, are looking very close uh, to a win um, uh, already. Um, well, this one uh, got, yeah, rook and two bishops extra. So uh, I don't think the king's going to last very long. Rook c7. And uh, double up on the seventh, and uh, Bob's your uncle, really. Um, this one as well. Um, mm, check. Yeah, I think King King D one probably is the best. Wait, what about Bishop takes Queen? Oh, good Lord! Sorry, uh, <laughs> I hadn't. Uh, yeah, Bishop takes Queen <laughs> could be rather good. even yeah. better. Could be rather even better, yeah. So uh, um, yeah, that's all going to be rather good. So yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's at least another three or four wins that are uh, coming very quickly, and uh, yeah, key question is whether this game. Uh, oh, okay, rook d6. Oh, okay, but knight f3 now. How is this? This is interesting. Knight f3. Knight f3. Oh, then queen g6 check. That's rather annoying. Yeah, no, that's rather annoying. I think black's that's lost here. Actually, uh, I'm afraid. There's no way you can do this. Queen g6 is just coming in and then everything falls apart. So it looks like this is going to be uh, uh, so a, a nice for, a game for BK George. Indeed. Um, uh, yeah, Lauren played your move, actually. He took, he took the queen. He took the queen. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, excellent there. Who have uh, thought it? Yep. Um, yeah, this one uh, is going to be mate uh, very, very soon. Bishop g6, and then we'll see if mate is going to happen. Um, let's have a look. What else have we got? Yeah, obviously, this one, the game race, the queen up is going to be mate on the next move. Um, let's have a look. Uh, this one, Phoenix Chaser, still. Uh, Ah, um, what a wall of pawns Black has across the centre of the board. Indeed, indeed. probably I'd, I'd look for knight e7, come round to f5, to h4, or to e3. I think that uh, I think knight e7 is just uh, queen h4. Why not? It's also very good. Um, so yeah, Lauren's looking at this game. I don't promise queen e5 is threatened, and uh, um, yeah. If you move the knight away, then queen takes g6. So, yeah, that's looking pretty, pretty good. Um, okay, I'm going to remind everyone um, about the uh, the charity. So, uh, Lauren is running for the Stroke Association 
Uh, he's running the marathon in October. It's in memory of his father, Bill da Costa. Um, and he is uh, uh, looking to raise money through these symbols um, and also through his run. So if you are um, able to sponsor him, that's very much appreciated. And what he's going to do in the marathon is uh, a bit unique. He's going to play run, but also play chess. So every three miles, he is going to play chess. I'm just going to put the link into the chat here. So uh, please do um, donate to Lauren if you can. I'm going to put it in both chats. Um, OK, I'm going to have to wrap up very shortly. Should we just see? Oh, they, we've, we've had a couple more wins. So let's just look at those. Yeah, it's uh, uh, there's eight wins now and seven playing. And uh, I think what we've got, we've got, uh, I think one game is going to be or oh, nine wins now and uh, and uh, uh, six playing. Um, and then we've got uh, this game where uh, Lauren uh, Lauren is um, uh, a rook up, so that's going to be a win very quickly. We've got this one, which is going to be a technical win quite quickly. Uh, lovely position for Black a pawn up and lots more space. We've got um, this game where Lauren's uh, exchanging a pawn up, a big diagonal. So uh, that's also not going to last uh, too long. He's got plenty of time now, relatively speaking. Uh, Black sacrificed a piece here, but it's not really sound. So uh, um, this is again winning for um, for uh, for White. Uh, so he's up to nine wins now. So uh, yeah. so he will win the match. Yeah, this is also, uh, he's two pawns up and a uh, very good position as well. I guess rook h8 is uh, pretty strong. So, oh, he's taking the rooks off. That's also good. Uh, I'd probably play uh, around here now with a knight and uh, yeah, should just be uh, should just be winning. Um, uh, this one, Dib and Mate. So, yeah, I mean, I think we've got, we're going to have one game that, he, that uh, Lauren will probably lose, which is this one. And then um, yeah, this one's all, the rest, all, all the rest will be... Um, all the rest are very promising. All right. So thank you, um, everybody who's who's playing in the simul. Uh, very brave to take on an international master and hope you enjoyed it. Oh, one loss. One loss already? Uh, oh, he's resigned. He's resigned. Because he resigned on... Is that the game against BK George? That's the game against BK George. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So one win for the juniors. Um, yeah. So So well done, everyone who's taken part... Um, and thank you everybody very much for watching. Thanks for watching.